privilege to welcome our minister authority to give us the word of God this morning. Please give her a round of applause. Amen. Amen. We cannot wait <laughs> for more blessings. Amen. <laughs> I know it was the last time I was here, I said that um, the Lord gave me, because this is what he does. He gives me stuff. Um, what can I see? What can you feel? What can you... But for some reason, for the past two weeks or so, the Lord has been talking to me about something different. And at first, I wasn't listening. Do you know that God speaks to you? God does speak to you, and I does. It's just that sometimes we're so busy, we can't hear it. But then when he really wants you to hear it, it's impressed upon you. Yes. You can't go around it. You can't go over it. You certainly can't go underneath Amen. it. You just have to walk through it and acknowledge it Amen. that yes, God is speaking. Amen. And so the topic I've got for you this morning is rescue. Redemption price paid. Don't ask where that is coming from, but I just believe that God is saying that this is what it is. So there I was thinking that one of my topics would have been on the senses. But God said, hold on, do a U-turn. This is your topic. So first of all, let me um, describe or explain what rescue is. Rescue involves being saved from a dangerous and difficult situation. Redemption involves being saved from sin or evil. I like to do um, from the beginning. I like to go back to the beginning of things. I like to, to start where things start. So I started in Genesis, Genesis 2, 4 to 3, 24. And it started with Adam and Eve in the garden. God created Adam and Eve and gave him free reign over the garden. He is the manager, he is the boss. All was going well. Because manager Adam, boss Adam, was doing an exemplary job. So those of you who are managers at your workplace, bosses at your workplace, even if you are not the bosses, you make the boss look good. <laughs> so you still do a good job. He was very good at what he does. But then, hmm, there came a problem. After some time, God saw that Adam, as he was doing a very good job, even though he was going about doing his duty, God saw that Adam was lonely. Yep. So God decided that, you know what? I'm gonna send somebody to help him. I'm gonna make him a helpmate. Mm -hmm. And that's when God presented woman to man. Here, Adam, here is Eve. Things were still going good. Then, entered sin. How sin started? Temptation. Then the sin happened. The one thing he asked them not to do was to eat of the tree of life. They did. Okay, we can always say it was Eve's fault all this time. Every time we've got this discussion, it's the woman's fault. And she listened to the thing. Whether it was the woman or the man, the fact is, they ate it. <laughs> they did eat it. <laughs> then, the plan of redemption and rescue was executed. God knew. He knew that all of this would happen. So he already planned a way of escape. Yes? yes. He already did that. Now can you imagine if God, in his ultimate wisdom, had this rescue and redemptive plan from way, 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 way back? Why do you think it has changed? Mm -hmm. It hasn't changed. God is unchanging. He doesn't change. What he said he'll do, he'll do. Mm. How he said he'll rescue you, he's already rescued you ages ago. And just remember that we are descendants and we are recipients of that legacy. You know, where God rescued, rescued people time and time again. What did God tell you to do and you still did it? This is a soul searching moment. This is where you think within yourself, 
What did God tell me to do? And I still went ahead and did it. Even though he said, don't go there, don't do that, don't talk to that person, we did. But then we can make the excuse that says, well, if she didn't, and if he didn't, and it's because that happened, and it's because... Hmm. Believe it or not, when we do something wrong, we have already wrestled within ourselves that we're going to do the wrong. Yeah? You choose. We choose. And we decide. Remember, the battlefield is in the mind. We've already thought about it. We think that this is the action that we're going to take. And what if I take, if you're like me, honestly, Bridgerton, you're seeing a refined daughter of the kingdom, trust me. You are seeing the grace of God upon my life. Amen. Because I tell you, if somebody step on my door, <laughs> God help them. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I didn't think twice because I have to give them a piece of my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, Christopher always said to me, so when you give them a piece, what's left for you? <laughs> <laughs> that was me until God took a hold of my life. So each time now that somebody do something to irk me or somebody says something that I don't like, I process it. This is where we decide. You process it. How am I going to respond? Am I going to give a peace? Am I going to keep it? Am I going to turn the other cheek? What am I going to do? I choose. We choose. In James 1, 14 to 15, it says, But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin when it's fully grown, gives birth to death. So there's a process. You think it, conceive it, you do it, and after some time, it becomes worse. After some times, it becomes worse. So sometimes you see some people doing some things and you think, my goodness, they couldn't? No, because they've already decided that this is the road that they're going to go down. They've already decided that this is what they're going to do. It only takes the grace of God. And every time I think about this, I think about the scripture said, that says, there goes I, but for the grace of God. This is when more than ever, when you're being tempted, when you're being, you know, because the enemy comes and he said, you know, I'll share this. So if you don't mind, please. My daughter at the moment, we've got a little situation, yeah? So I believe that I'm a praying mother of God. I believe that I pray. I believe that I'm a prayerful person. So how could this happen to me? How? Anyway, my daughter, she says to me, Mom, you don't understand. When the feeling come on me and it says, do it, Zoe, do it. I just do it. So she's got no, you know, and I'm trying to say to her, fight it, fight it, fight it. But this is how the enemy comes. He comes and he pokes you and he pokes you and he pushes you. And he, there's a situation that is created and then says, what are you going to do? So are you going to call upon God? No, what are you going to do? And then I have to think and I have to process. Right. There was a time when I wouldn't stop to think. I would just go ahead because I feel like it's right. I feel like, yeah, this is me defending myself. But then, when Christ came into my life, there was a different feeling, a different way of approach, a different action. action. So the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in Galatians 6. Self-control is a hard one. So you can experience or express love. You can express joy, you can but self-control. Brethren, and if you're anything like me, self-control takes a lot of work. I'm not saying that 
Because you can love somebody. Seriously, you can. You can be good. You can be gentle. But when it comes to self-control, and especially when you are married and have children, my goodness, then children keep talking, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and when you follow up with the husband and the wife, it's not easy. <laughs> It's not easy to hold your tongue, you know. <laughs> you know? Self-control. Amen. Mm -hmm. In Exodus, the Israelites, God's chosen people, were rescued from dangerous and difficult situations, especially fleeing from Egypt and crossing the Red Sea. As they traveled in the wilderness, the people murmured, they grumbled, they complained, they argued, they disobeyed. Have we been murmuring? Have we been grumbling? Yeah. Have we disobeyed? You know, every time I do this, every time I make a comparison, I look at myself. I don't look at anybody because I'm thinking, I could do that. That could happen to me. I always go to me first. Because when I go to me first, then I can make sense of everything else. What have I been murmuring about? What have I been grumbling about? What have I been disobedient about? Here again is another expression of how God would rescue his people. God is a patient God. Even though they murmured, and complained, God still made a way of redemption through Joshua and Caleb in Joshua 1. So yes, most of the old timers didn't make it, but then there's Joshua to redeem God's rescue and redemption, right, faith. God loves us. Amen. God does love us. Look around amongst the peers within your circle of influence. Can God's redemptive plan prevail through you? Just as it has prevailed through Joshua and Caleb, can you be used as a point of prevailing God's redemptive love, God's redemption, God's rescue? Sometimes God uses us, you know, in difficult situations. You don't know. You can be an answer to somebody. Yeah. Somebody could be planning to, to have suicide, and you can make that phone call. That is God rescuing you. Somebody can say, you know what, I'm about to do this. And just at that moment, they think, oh, let me call this person. That is God rescue. Amen. So sometimes some things where you think might be coincidental, it is not coincidental. I'll share this with you. I, I know this is gonna be a hard topic, but for some reason, I'm going down this road, and I don't know why, but I'm going down this road. Amen. I, in my earlier life, wanted to commit suicide. Mm. You know why? Mm. Because I felt like I didn't want to live after a broken relationship. Mm. I felt like that was the end. I felt that there's no way for me, no way out. So I was going to commit suicide. And I thought about it. I planned it. I planned how I was going to do it. But there is this little old woman. <laughs> I was living with my partner at the time, and there's this little old woman. She would come and check up on us, you know, as a couple, she would come and check up on us. That's why I respect old people. I yes. do. I really do. And she, she came that day, don't know what happened, but I knew that that was the day I was going to do it. And the woman came and she knocked and she knocked and I decided I'm not opening the door because I am going to do something. And the woman, she knocked and she knocked and she knocked. And I heard this stop and I thought, good, she's gone. Let me go. And, and she knocked again. And I thought, why is this woman knocking, knocking the door? At the time, Virgin, I didn't know that it was God's rescue. Amen. And the woman decided she's not leaving. And then she shouted, I know you're in there. I'm coming. Come and open the door. And when I opened the door, the woman decided she's not leaving. She said, I'm not going to leave until your partner comes. And then 
When my partner came, she said to him, I don't know what she was planning to do, but I just felt like, she felt like coming to check upon me. No, that's God's rescue. Amen. That is how God rescued you. Mm -hmm. That's how God rescued you. So I don't know, maybe for someone, I'm not sure, but then I'm just saying that God can rescue you. Things are not so bad. Amen. Even when it gets that bad, God can send rescue. Amen. God rescues us. He does. Because he knows. He knows. Remember that you know, he has been a man. Mm -hmm. There is no sin that is unknown to him. Mm -hmm. He knows them. And that's when he provides a way of escape for us. God loves us, but it doesn't depend. God love for us does not depend on the on faithfulness. It is unconditional. He loves us while we are still sinners. All of us have been born and shaped in iniquity. We're all born sinners. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even the beautiful baby that smiled at you and said, Ooh, baby, ha, 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 mama. <laughs> yep. Though we are demanding <laughs> and we do not remain faithful, God is still our faithful and loving father. So even though we are not faithful to him. God remains faithful Amen. to us. God remains faithful to us. Some of us, we should have died a long time. Some of us should have been gone. Amen. Like all me, me, I should have been gone. Yes. I should have died. Yes. You know, some people say, oh, back home for me, They've got this thing called Juju yes. or Obia. Let me talk to you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. People say, hey, I'm going to do you. Mm -hmm. I bet you don't wake up tomorrow. I bet you when you wake up, this happen. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I used to say, really? Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I was a bare faced child. My neighbors, one, that way and one that way. They used to fight against each other, this juju back and forth. <laughs> and I'm like, what on earth is going on? Yeah? I don't like to see um, what they call dumpy ghosts. I don't like to see those, but I can feel them. Yeah? So one day I was hanging out my clothes underneath the tree and I just felt like this presence was there. And I, I don't know how I heard, but it's like, Something said, you're not afraid, are you? And I looked around and I'm thinking, who is that? And then I walked off and then it's like something said again, you're not afraid, are you? And then I just flipped and said, of what? You know? No, I didn't know I was talking to an entity. It's only afterwards my sister said, did you see the man under the tree? <laughs> no, I didn't see any man under the tree. But no. And that's when I realized that, hold on a minute. So when I walk, sometimes people say, I, I know you, I know, what, what's, what, who are you, what's, you know? But I never used to pay any attention to it, yeah? But long before you were born, there was a plan of rescue. Amen. Long before we were even conceived in our mother's womb, God has already prepared a rescue. Because, you know, it says, redemption price paid. We have been redeemed, we have. We have, God knows that there's a sin and then he's redeemed us. God has done that. This one now I call my ultimate rescue and redemption prize paid. John 15, 13 talks about greater love hath no man than this to lay down one's life for his friend. Greater love has no man than this and to lay down a life for his friend. Do you have that love to lay down for your friend? Would you do it? Me personally, I'm gonna answer. I don't know if I would. Even for my children, I'm being honest. I don't know. But I think probably if faced, if I'm faced with that situation, it may happen. This love is, it's like the highest, you know when, listen. God's love is so encompassing. God's love is so, it's like I can't, 
unless you've experienced this love of God, you won't understand. I can't do it justice by telling you how much God loves us. How much God loves us. God loves us so that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16. He gave his only begotten son. Now, for me, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. For Jesus to lay down his life to rescue me, to redeem me, to redeem us back to him. When somebody says, Jesus loved you, you know, I think sometimes we take it for granted, Jesus is love. We don't understand how big, how deep, how um, magnified Jesus' love is. And then we think that, oh, we can do, we are, we manage our own self. We can do what we want to do. But no, we can't. Because Jesus loves us, and he knew, he knows that we've sinned, he died on that cross. That day, when he gave his life, that was the ultimate rescue, redemption of love, redemption price paid. We can't pay it back. We don't deserve it, we can't pay it back. But he gave it to us. He's done that. He took everything to the cross. Every time I think about the cross, I think, Bridget, I was wild. Oh my gosh, I was wild. I was a bully. I was. Anybody step on me, I was. But you know, when you when you when you have the love of God, and when 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 um when the love of God has been revealed in your life, you can no longer be that person. You can no longer be that person. When you've got an intimate relationship with Christ, you can't do it. Even when you try to do it. Bridget, I don't like to tell lies. I detest lies. But I used to lie. Oh God, you name it, I lied. You tell it, I lied. Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as somebody opened them out and I hear the lie, I like, Jesus. Mm. Because I detest it so much, I've asked God to remove it. And yes. now if I hear it, it's like it just, it just hurts me. But then that takes relationship with Christ. Yes. That takes me understanding that God has rescued me from that. I'm redeemed completely from all of that. So then I need to understand that price is already paid. The price is already paid. I've been rescued. I've been redeemed. I have been rescued and I have been redeemed. So John 3.16 that talks about for God so loved the world, he gave us his only begotten son. It's just perfectly enca encapsulated in this, you know, scripture. Love isn't something God does, it's who he is. There's no dangerous or difficult situation that God cannot rescue us from. None. Addiction. What addiction? If you work with God, God will take that from you. Yeah. Eventually. He will. Yeah. We start out as baby and we grow. Hmm? Yes. There's a process. Yes. Remember it talks about in the scripture earlier on that how sin is conceived yes. and then afterwards it grows. Yes. There is a process. Yes. So before you do it, there's a temptation. And then there's the act. So when you're tempted, try to fight the temptation. Amen. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's not easy. Brethren, it's not easy. But then, once we ask Jesus in the situation to help me, God give me supernatural strength. Amen. God help me. God help me today. God help me. And then sometimes we think we can't pray. Everybody can pray. Yes. You know why not everybody can pray? Lord Jesus, if they come me to Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hmm? Amen. We can pray. That's a prayer. You call Jesus. Even if you have to say Jesus. Mm. Jesus. Yes. That's a prayer. It will grow. Amen. It will grow. Amen. 
So there is no sin that is known to man that you can't be that you can't be redeemed from. Yes. Because Jesus paid that redemption price with his life. So sometimes when I hear addiction, I hear my father talk about it. My father used to smoke. Well, you've all met me dad, and he told you. My father used to burn ganja like, whoa, weed. Smoke weed, split after split. One like the other. You talk about chain smoking. My dad never used to smoke cigarettes. He used to smoke weed. And then when he smoked the weed, he would look like this. And, you know what I'm thinking? Yeah. But now, my father has been redeemed. He's been rescued. You've met my dad. You've seen him. Jesus has rescued him. Jesus has paid that redemption price for him. Every time I look at my dad, you know, I think to myself, if that my dad, honest to God, every time I look at my dad, I think, hmm, my dad also, his mouth, his words, they weren't clean. You just have to set me. And he's a, got a curse word. No, as you see, my dad's a changed man. So every time I look at my dad, I think, well, if that can change. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Then obviously I can change. Yes. Right, Isaiah 53. <laughs> Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was pierced for our transgression, and he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, yes. and his wounds are healed. Amen. Because Jesus died on the cross, everything has been sorted. Amen. Consider this. What needs to change in your life? after hearing this what do you need to look at what spotlight that you need to turn on addiction habits they can change because jesus can rescue us from them just remember we who are believers have been rescued and the redemption price is already paid i can't say for those who don't know they don't know so we can't expect them to think, well, I've been redeemed, I've been rescued. They, they don't even know that they need rescuing. They don't even know this. But we who know that, we can take that. We need to do our part and keep walking in that knowledge and understanding. Obviously, it's not an instant fix. You know, sometimes I used to hear evangelists, no, 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 not you, sir. You used to hear, just come to Jesus and everything will be all right. Not necessarily, necessarily. So there's two to it. Everything will be all right because it's a gradual process. But you need to make that first step. Yes, just come to Jesus. You need to make that first step, yeah? It's not an instant fix. It's a daily walking with Jesus. It's a lifestyle. So endeavor to create that or cultivate that lifestyle. It's not gonna be easy. We fall all the time. When I was a young Christian, oh God, <laughs> I used to hear Jesus every Glory to God, but I've been rescued. <laughs> so even when you become a Christian, the things that you used to do, they still follow you until gradually they drop off, they drop off. But then you have to do something. You have to want for it to change. You have to want it to change. There's no way that it's going to change when you keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. That addiction. You keep doing it. You keep smoking. You keep gambling. You keep this. You keep that. You have to try. Try. Endeavor to try. Jesus, I don't want this. God, I don't want So even when you do it, when I used to sin, and I'm sinning, I'm like, Jesus, please, you know, I don't want to do this. But, you know, I'm being honest. I'm being honest. You know? Because I'm, I'm, I'm fighting, I'm fighting against a force here. You know what I mean? But then ultimately, obviously, Jesus won. So, if you haven't taken anything from today, <clears throat> just remember this. I'm just going to repeat. Endeavor to cultivate that lifestyle of understanding that you have, we have already been rescued and that the redemption price is already paid. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.